Drew, so tell me a little bit about your background there. How'd you get into uh, nutraceuticals? Yeah, so great question, John. And uh, TouchSuite has really granted me the opportunity to tie in a lot of different experiences that I've had in my life. So prior to getting my master's degree in business, I actually studied health sciences. So when I got into the payments game, it seemed like a really natural industry for me to go into, especially within the high risk merchant account sector. And again, it's kind of given me a, a lens to lean into the industry that I feel like most people don't typically have, just going the, the typical financial route uh, through education and then into the industry. So even with your background like in this, you kind of got into it, you already knew what everybody was talking about, so you didn't have to go, oh, what's what's a nootropic or what's a whatever. Exactly, yeah. And I, I mean, I've been a big fan and advocate for alternative health products my entire life. Uh, I grew up in Akron, Ohio, which is an area that has historically just been decimated by traditional medicine and, and opioids especially. So I've always had a, a special place in my heart for anything alternative wellness. So to be able to tie in that passion, my previous health experience, and then being able to help these business owners sell these products to consumers on the end, it's, it's been really powerful for me. What, what do you feel are like the big trends coming up in the industry? Because I mean, you've seen it from before the trends happened, but what are the, you know, what are the newest trends? That yeah, so uh, great question. Again, I'm seeing a lot of things as far as the anti-aging market is becoming very popular. And there's a lot of controversy right now around certain ingredients and having a little bit of grief with the FDA as, as such as NMN, which is a big one that's been a hot topic in banking and payments this, this past uh, year or so since they misapplied the drug preclusion principle to NMN. And they, they previously did this with another ingredient a few years back. So it kind of sets somewhat of a dangerous precedent for these anti-aging products, but they're gaining a ton of popularity. And that kind of ties into the entire Nutri Cosmetics market as well. So people are looking for supplementation to be able to use as beauty products as well. So I'm seeing a lot of growth there. And then not directly related to aging, but the uh, mycology market really starting to boom. You're seeing a lot of applications for athletes when it comes to like endurance and immunity properties. And then more on the cognitive side with the Lion's Mane's product. So I'm seeing a lot of that um, being used for people that are maybe struggling with some type of cognitive deficiencies or things like that. So I think as education grows around the benefits of mycology products, that's gonna be one of the, the most popular growing markets over the next decade. So, so even with all those regulations and everything, are you seeing a, a, a downtrend or an uptrend in being able to get uh, people approved for you know, merchant processing, being able to tap, swipe, you know, mobile, all of that stuff. What, what do you see sort of the hurdles uh, so, right now? So currently now it's, it's accessible and I feel as though finding a merchant account can be challenging, but the real challenge is finding the right merchant account for the types of products that you have. So what I found in speaking with people is that they don't have an issue when they get approved for the accounts. It's actually sustaining the accounts and having an organization and a bank on the back end that understands the products enough to be able to support and advise them on what is okay and what is not. So I, I find it more of a reliability issue with companies that are looking to take on new product SKUs or work with new ingredients and things like that. Anytime there's something new that comes out, if the banks don't know what it is or if they don't have an organization that's processing with an awareness of what those ingredients are, a lot of times people get skeptical and accounts just get shut down without any notice. And you get involved sort of as, as sort of almost a, a consultant being able to, uh, I guess, help uh, owners and companies navigate the landscape. A absolutely, yeah. And I mean, as an organization, we've been around for 20 years. So on the company level, we've supported Nutra that entire life cycle of the company. So we're very familiar with the products and what's necessary to actually support these companies for the long term. And then on the individual level, I think education is one of the biggest differentiators between a great merchant processing company and individual than somebody that is just kind of in the, the mid tier when it comes to that. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're aligning yourself with an individual and an organization that are not only going to make sure that you can process payments, but educate you on strategies to optimize the collection of those payments and increase your revenue overall. So you, you essentially speak to the owners, you tell them what to do, what not to do, and then you, 
I mean, I assume you're familiar with all the regulatory elements uh, within the payment processing industry and then again within the Nutra industry as well. Uh, absolutely. And that's a, that's a big piece of it as well is just making sure that everything is done prior to submission to the processing company or to the bank on the back end because you want to make sure that everything is packaged and presented in a compliant way that's not going to cause any grief with any FDA or FTC regulatory bodies. And again, it's just the lack of knowledge of some of those areas that companies run into issues in the long term. And a lot of times they don't even know that they're not in compliance because they find out after it's too late. Are there any industries that have kind of exploded since, let's say, since you've been involved trying to get people, you know, up and up and running, up in processing. But uh, have you seen any, you know, uh, verticals that have really exploded in the uh, nutrient industry? Yeah. So I've I've seen a lot of uh, talk around like beverages, specifically functional beverages that have any type of prebiotics or probiotics in them. Uh, consumers are really leaning towards convenient products, uh, and then probiotics and prebiotics have been on the map for quite some time now. But I'm seeing a big trend in the drinkables, and then. What about like the taurine drinks and stuff like that? Is that uh, does that sort of fall under your purview or? I, I wouldn't say so necessarily. A lot of the basic sports nutrition drinks don't have too much of an issue unless they have certain like nootropic ingredients like L-theanine and things like that. There's certain additives that can take a product from being very commonly accessible for payments and banking to the opposite, depending upon the, the ingredients that they choose to, to integrate into the products. Do you see any innovations coming out that, let's say there's one guy who's doing something and all of a sudden everybody's gonna jump on that bandwagon? Like, is there anything from any of the trade shows you've gone to or any of your clients that are you know coming out with something amazing yeah so some of the really big things i'm seeing are not just offering supplement products for everyone offering them for personalized individual use so personalized packaging personalized ingredients that are based upon biomedical analysis so whether they do some type of dna test or they have a health app that tracks their sleep in other areas of health habits so they evaluate those kind of things and then the personalized nutrition or supplement is based upon their findings so it's a much more boutique experience for the consumer and they're getting more so what they need rather than certain ingredients that they may not really benefit too much from physiologically and how does that work with uh you know uh, just even the merchant processing and distribution being able to sell it to large retailers or being able to sell it to health food stores how does that it really integrate with the whole financial ecosystem of the nutrient industry? The with the increased trend of personalization. Or? Yeah, like how does how does that work? Because you're personalizing a product, or you're coming out with a product that maybe has this ingredient but doesn't have a different ingredient. It it's tougher to evaluate for sure from like the banking and underwriting standpoint. Typically, these companies though they will if it's done the right way they will have all of the ingredients that are available boldly stated on the website. And that's one of the biggest recommendations I can make is that typically companies can find processing. It's just finding the right home and making sure that everybody on both sides of the equation is very transparent. Uh, but to get back to the personalization at scale, especially in retail and wholesale, you don't see that as much. It's more on like the direct to consumer front on right. e-commerce where people can go in order their personalized stack of nutrition products and then get those shipped directly to their door. And I've even seen some nice little trends of having individual names on packaging and things like that. So I think that's kind of a market that's really gonna continue to grow is a more personalized approach to any type of dietary So that's mainly e-commerce that uh, you're working with in that regard. Do you, do you uh, work outside e-commerce in the space? Is it? Uh, or is it really mainly e-commerce companies that you're dealing it's, with? It's a lot of e-commerce, at least where, where I get involved. I mean, we do optimize with level two and level three transaction data on the B2B side. So anybody in Nutri, I'm either working on the wholesale side as far as them accepting payments for those wholesale orders. But a lot of time it's in the card not present portion of the game where they're selling directly to consumers. And for most companies, that's how they begin. So anybody that I'm working on the startup level, it's typically 
starting out on the e-commerce and then ideally a couple years down the road once they have a good amount of volume that's when they kind of try to get themselves into the retail space so you can uh, do startups it's not there's no prerequisites no three months of processing or any of that stuff you can just no. cold cold out of the box you can get somebody a merchant that account. that's correct and i i would always advise ex except for a couple exceptions i would always advise people to at least consult with a high risk payment provider up front. That way they can help educate you in the process. Because again, going back to the education piece of it, you don't want to work with somebody that's going to just give you the, the cheapest rate possible right out of the gate. You want to make sure that they set you up for sustainability and educate you as a business owner, especially in this space. In Nutra, you have enough to worry about when it comes to the FTC, the FDA, uh, you know, new ingredient changes that you're exploring or product formulation, et cetera. You don't want to have to worry about the reliability of actually being able to sell those products when you put in all the work. What's, what's the, uh, what, are, what are the main three questions people ask you when they're looking for a uh, you know, merchant processing account or even beyond that, since you do a lot of consulting work for these uh, companies, what, what are the main things that new companies ask you before they come to you? I, I think a lot of it for me is just they don't understand merchant processing. I mean, I, I can speak for myself that I was kind of ignorant when it came to the industry. I always went into any business or online. I paid with my card. I didn't think twice about the complex series of interactions that goes on in the back end. So that's Who the does? case for, exactly, <laughs> right. But that's the case for a lot of these new business owners is that they don't even know the complexities of it. So I spend a great amount of time just getting them to understand, hey, this is what payment processing is. This is why your business may or may not be considered high or higher risk because of X, Y ingredients and because of how the FDA or the FTC feels about it. So there's a lot that goes into it on the education side. And what do they, um, what do they ask you? What do they, you know, it's uh, how do I swipe a credit card? What's sort of the uh, question? A little, little, more, little more advanced than that. <laughs> but yeah, just typically they, they want to make sure that they get set up the right way. And a lot of times they'll be trying to, to shop different options. They'll get conflicting information. Or if they have been in the business for a little while, what you'll find is that if they've had negative experiences, which is common in the industry, they're very skeptical at first because a lot of people in this industry have made a lot of empty promises. So again, I just encourage you to really make sure that you're comfortable with who you're working with and that you know, like, and trust that individual and that the company actually has the infrastructure to support you once you're aboard. Because to me, that's far more important to make sure that you're actually gonna get paid out for all the hard work that you put in rather than just trying to find somebody that's gonna get you the cheapest rate up front. Right, that makes sense. So uh, where, where do you think the nutrient industry is going? Where, if, if you had a crystal ball and you look 15 years ahead, what do you, where do you think it's going? Oh, man. Are we gonna become superheroes or what's the... Uh... That, that would be awesome. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> if that did become the case, I don't think, uh, I don't think Big Pharma would allow us to, to sell it under Nutra anymore, which is, you're kind of seeing some of that with the NMN stuff right now. But I don't know, I think just uh, we're going to get better quality products. I think what I'm seeing a lot right now is that some of the, the snake oil products the, with the research that's coming out and consumer awareness about more health and just overall access to information via the internet, people are more, more informed now than ever. So I think you're going to see a more educated consumer base that's really going to weed out some of the snake oil products. And then you're seeing some really great companies step up to the plate, like Now Foods, for example. They're going out and they're product testing all these different supplements from different companies and brands and actually making sure that their COAs are matching up with their analysis and things like that. So if we keep having companies like that step up to the plate and just increasing the transparency, the only people that are going to survive in the industry are people that are genuine and actually care about the consumer on the end. So people uh, getting COAs from third party companies that are completely unaffiliated is sort of what, uh, where you think it's gonna end up going. I, yeah, I think so. I just think everybody's gonna become a little bit more educated and, and informed. And now the only negative side of that is, is with all this access to information comes access to a lot of misinformation as well. So I think again, as long as these great companies keep stepping up to the plate, actually selling good products, making sure they're legitimate, vetting the suppliers that they're getting them from, and making sure that they're upholding all the, the standards of the good manufacturing practices, then I, I think the industry is just going to increase as far as 
you know, authenticity goes and products that are really benefiting consumers. So we'll be able to run uh, faster, jump higher, and think uh, clearer? I, I hope so. I mean, some of these, uh, especially some of the mycology products, I mean, looking at some of the research and, and personally using some of them myself, I mean, I've seen some tremendous benefits when it comes to just immunity, overall clarity, focus. So I'm a big advocate uh, for certain products and, you know, I could dive all the way into everything. Well, you've I got take the education even it, to back you up on that it, so exactly and that's and that's like the biggest part is just you know I, I would encourage any consumers to just make sure that they're aligning themselves with reputable individual brands as well and making sure that they do have third-party lab tests that are actually reflective of the ingredients and making sure that you are looking into the clinical research available for those ingredients to make sure that you're taking the recommended dosage for yourself Cool, man. Well, listen, thanks for sitting down with me and talking. I appreciate it. And uh, give, you, give your last pitch here on uh, your company and your abilities. Yeah, I guess overall, I would just say, again, go with somebody that's going to educate you throughout the process. If there's anyone out there that is struggling with anything or it feels like they're lacking in the relationship and partnership that they have with a payments provider, I'm more than happy to jump in, have a conversation with you. Just evaluate your circumstance, and I'd love to be able to help you if I can. And if I can't do it individually, I'm always happy to make an introduction to somebody who can. All right. Thanks a lot, Drew. Appreciate it. Of course. Thanks, John. Thanks.